Before UCF in 2017, and before Utah and Boise State in the 2000s, there was one team that paved the way for undefeated, non-Power 5 teams getting national recognition. And that team was the 1998 Tulane Green Wave. You might have seen Tulane this year and think they're a bottom 10 program. And if you look at what they've done in the past 10 years, you would think they're at best a solid 500 team. But for one glorious year, they scored more points per game than 2021 Western Kentucky, arguably had a better coaching staff than 2019 Clemson, and they dominated their competition way better than their 20.4 point differential, which is already a lot. My name is Kevin Redfield from the Dropout Sports, and let's get right into it. Leading up to the 1998 season, the Tulane Green Wave actually used to be a part of the SEC up until 1965. And in the 1970s, they had teams regularly ranked in the 10s or 20s that boasted intimidating defenses. But after those few years, the program fell off and hard. Between 1982 and 1996, the Green Wave only had one bowl appearance and never had a winning record. Also a fun fact here, during this time, they hired Mac Jones and he coached there for three years. And he won 11 and 23, Bruh. but back on track. In that 96 season, they entered the newly founded Conference USA, and after a disappointing 2-9 season, they fired their head coach, Buddy Tevens, and hired the guy that gave the Louisiana team a glimpse of the high life, Tommy Bowden. We all know Bowden as the son of legendary Florida State coach Bobby Bowden and the coach at Clemson that preceded Dabo Sweeney. But before that, he was a seasoned assistant coach who had been around the SEC coaching carousel. In 1997, the Green Wave program gave the unproven Bowden a shot to turn the program around. And boy did he ever. In that 1997 season, his first year as a coach, he took the previously 2-9 team and flipped it into a 7-4 team that went 5-1 in their new conference. The positive changes happened on both sides, but the most dramatic change happened on the offense. Bowden introduced a no-huddle offense that gave opposing teams utter migraines. That offense was a blend of shotgun plays, a balanced run-pass attack, and the aforementioned two-minute tempo. The shift from a more run-heavy, under-the-center system was a blended initiative between Bowden and then-offensive coordinator Rich Rodriguez, who you may remember as the guy that coached nationally recognized West Virginia, Michigan, and Arizona teams between 2001 and 2017. In previous years at Tulane, the run game was king. But with Rodriguez and Bowden's introduction of this new system, starting quarterback Sean King was given the freedom to be more than just a handoff guy. King went from a fringe starter that barely ran the ball himself to the Conference USA Player of the Year that could hurt teams through the air and on the ground. This team was changing college football, and just in time, some other new changes were coming. The headlines of the 1998 football season surrounded the continued dominance of Texas running back Ricky Williams and the three-way quarterback race of Akili Smith, Donovan McNabb, and Tim Couch. But what affected the college football landscape the most was the implementation of the BCS system. Instead of relying solely on the AP poll, the new system also used computers to help rank teams and place them in certain bowls. Since the system was new, there were expected to be some kinks in it. But what Tulane did that year arguably made the NCAA change their methodology. A five-win difference in a coach's first year is pretty astonishing. But what happened in the 1998 season couldn't ever be predicted. First and ten for Tulane, king of the shotgun. Rolls right, stops, uncorks a bomb for Kerwin Cook. Oh, that's it on the shoulder catch. 15, 10, 5, oh, touchdown. With 10 offensive starters and a good amount of defenders returning, the mean green wave was on a mission. The backfield duo of Tony Converse and Jamaican Dartes complemented the fast-paced, balanced offense really well. Two star receivers on the outside, Juwan Dawson and PJ Franklin, established themselves and gave King reliable, explosive targets. A straight-up deadly defense was highlighted by their star secondary, which included Tellius Carr, Alfonso Roundtree, and Michael Jordan. 
And of course, Sean King himself was a man on a mission since 1998 was his last year in Tulane Green. King that year went on to throw for 3,508 yards as well as rushing for 641 more. He had 38 passing touchdowns, which is a single season record for a Tulane quarterback. But the cherry on top here is that he added 11 more touchdowns on the ground, solidifying himself as possibly the best player that Tulane has ever been a home to. As a team, they scored 45 points per game, which was the second highest scoring offense then, and even today would be the second highest, only to Ohio State. And don't let those almost 25 points per game lead you astray, as the team would regularly bench guys in the fourth quarter due to the enormity of their leads. They cruised past their regular season opponents, but when bowl time came, they were treated like they always had been that season, overlooked. Back then, the BCS system chose the best eight teams and placed them into four selected bowls. Unfortunately, even though the 1998 Green Wave was undefeated and beat their opponents by more than 20 points per game, they were only ranked 10th in the final regular season rankings and were not chosen by the BCS. When other two lost teams like Florida and Texas A&M were ranked above them, people were irked to some degree. The main argument by people was that the Green Wave couldn't prove themselves if they weren't given the opportunity to play teams around their ranking. And with no other choice than to play the unranked 9-4 BYU Cougars in the Liberty Bowl, their chances for that became zero. Also, because of this hype and fervor around Tommy Bowden and how he built this program up, he was a hot coaching prospect. And even before the Liberty Bowl, it was announced that he would be accepting the job at Clemson and he would be leaving the coaching duties to the recent hiree, Chris Scalfo. Bowden also brought Rich Rodriguez along with him to Clemson, but with players and coaches alike begging him to stay for their bowl game, he decided to be there for his players on New Year's Eve. As you can likely tell from the title of the video, they soundly beat the Cougars and jumped three spots to number seven in the final poll. As said before, Bowden and Rodriguez had great coaching careers, and even Scalfo stayed at Tulane for eight more years. Sean King was drafted in the second round of the 1999 draft, and he led the Tampa Bay Bucks to a 10-6 season his second year, but was benched the year after for veteran Brad Johnson. He did win a Super Bowl ring with the Bucks in 2002, but he never started another season or won another game. The BCS system was changed after that year to include five more computer rankings, and I know it was likely not because of Tulane, but the outcry may have been enough to reach the people at the top, and honestly, that's just my opinion, so don't take it for gold. In those 23 years since that season, Tulane has gone 97 and 180. That's only 35% of their games. They also only had five winning seasons in that time and only one single season where they won above 500 in their own conference. They've had talented players come through and specifically quarterbacks like Patrick Ramsey, JP Lossman, and Ryan Griffin. They all showed their capabilities but they never had that coach to pair with them that could spark something special in New Orleans like Tommy Bowden did with Sean King. I know most of these videos are made to celebrate FBS teams and enjoy their rise, but I wanted to make this one in particular to celebrate a moment. I know I didn't make it a theme throughout the video, but if you think about that time in New Orleans, they didn't have a basketball team yet, and the Saints were in the middle of a four-year streak of not having a single winning record. Even LSU, the team that we've all known to be a winning factory, they went 4-7 and seven after being ranked 9th in the preseason poll. Look, I wasn't even born during this season, so I can only imagine the fervor in the city, but I would imagine that the Green Wave were making waves, both in the hardiest city on earth and throughout the region alike. Thank you all for watching this one, and if you haven't already, if you could, and I know YouTubers say this over and over again, but if you could subscribe and maybe like this video, that would mean the world to me, Cody, Greg, and everyone around us at Dropout Sports. All right, let go. Just a bunch of dropouts. <laughs> <laughs>